Max Burgundy. And I'm Rebecca Corningstone. Welcome to GNN, the Global News Network. Today we're going to be talking about the genocide that has been happening in Bosnia. Bosnia is located in the middle of what used to be Yugoslavia. Right in the middle. But it's been ripped apart by a war and over 100,000 people have died. A war between the Serbs and the Bosnian Muslims. Welcome back to GNN. Today we have Grace Kind, a geographer. I got some questions. Where is Bosnia located? It is located in Europe between Italy and Romania. Uh, how was the environment impacted by this event? It was heavily impacted by landmines and consequence, a consequence of the war. Grace Kind. Back to you, Katie. Welcome back. We have Becca Cornstone, The Economist. During this period of time, when the war started, you can see that Yugoslavia was at around a high point in their economy. But once the war started, it took a dramatic turn for the worse. And when the war ended, in the, this period of time, you can see that it's starting to get better, but not quite where it used to be. What were the long-term costs of the country? Their jobs, education, and trust in the government, and their own right to manage the country's money. Australia is in charge of their government. Were there any long-term benefits to the country? If so, what? Not even close. The genocide has spiraled the country into a deep, deep depression. Now we have Katie Fantana, the historian. Katie, what were some major events in the past that led to the changes in government? That would be the civil war that happened that broke up the countries, otherwise known as the Cold War. What social groups were involved? Christians, otherwise known as Serbs and Muslims. What government was in place slash power? Parliamentary government. What else do you have to say about the history? Um, nothing. There you go, <laughs> Katie Fantana. And now with us today, we have the ambassador of Bosnia, Gerard Nagodic. Mr. Nagodic, what happened to the people who were displaced? Well, Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats were displaced, and... Um, thousands of Muslims and Croats were killed, and many women were sexually assaulted, and Bosnian, wait, and many men were bussed off to killing sites or just killed on the spot. Survivors were forced to leave their homes and wander all over the country looking for a safe place. Many survivors immigrated to new countries. What a shame. What about the bystanders? Were there upstanders? What did they do? Well, the bystanders were the United States, the United Nations, the Muslim Sultans, and the Sarajevo. They did not help out pretty much in the whole genocide. And the upstanders were mostly the North Atlantic Treaty Association, or the NATO. They sent over 60,000 like peace troops to Bosnia after the Dayton Accords were signed. And they were there to preserve peace after the Bosnian War. What policies were put in place that could have contributed to the genocide? On November 1995, the Dayton Accords, otherwise known as the Dayton Agreements, were signed in Dayton, Ohio. This agreement ended the three and a half year Bosnian War. Over 66,000 NATO peacekeeping troops were sent to Bosnia. Is there anything else you have to say? Lots of people died, and this should never happen again. Are you aware that you are wanted in more than 50 states? It's not my problem. <laughs> this has been the Global News Network. I'm Rebecca Corningstone. I'm Katie Fantana. And I'm Grace Kind. And I am Max Burgundy. You stay classy, Woodridge. <laughs>